G'day everybody and welcome to We'll Never Be Royals, the podcast where we talk about royal scandals. I'm LK and that's Rossi. Hey mate. G'day mate. How's your shit? Look, big news in our house this week. Wow. We bought a washer dryer. (gasps) Oh my god, I'm so proud of you. (laughs) Very exciting. But also, I hate clothes that have been dried in the dryer, so I haven't used the dryer bit yet. Um, isn't that <laughs> delicious? Nah, because they get like stinky quicker. Like I prefer them to be hung out in the sunshine, and then they smell like sunshine. Yeah, okay, but we're not all fairy princesses. Like sometimes <laughs> you just need to have dry clothes. And yeah, I know that's why we bought it because we thought it would come in handy. But thus far, have not used the dryer. Okay. And I'm, okay. Not, I'm not really planning on using it, only in emergency situations. Yeah, so you don't have to put your undies in the microwave. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> you can probably get um, dryer sheets that smell like sunshine and joy. Yeah, but it's not the same. Yeah, no, I get it. It's like grape-flavoured things. Like they never taste like grape. They taste like purple. 100%. Yeah, they're a little bit sour. It's like grapes aren't sour. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 Well done. Have you named them? Oh, no. <laughs> no, but it, no, it's 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 combined. It's a washer dryer combined. It's not two separate white goods. It's one white good. That gets wet and then dry. Yes. The future is here. <laughs> wow. It it's is, like perfect, it, but a machine. It's like what? Like Pert, the shampoo and conditioner in one, but yours is a machine. That's right. I mean, the future is here if we're getting excited about white goods. <laughs> well, on the flip side, producer Rob and I are looking for places to live right now because we've been high and homeless for quite a long time. And in America, the white goods come with the house. Really? So- yeah. So I just never want to invest in that because what if I sell the house and have to give up the good fridge, you know? Really? You get a fridge when you buy a house. Yeah. People don't move their fridges or their washing machines. Do you know what? That is really handy because that is such a pain in the ass to do that. Yeah. But what if you get the best fridge in the world and then you want to move down the road? Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Um, that was Domestic Corner with LK and Rossi. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. <laughs> um, a lot of royal news this week, actually. Who yeah, I thought, I thought that too, actually. Yeah. Um, what's on your mind? Um, well, first up, Harry and Meg's on the cover of Time Mag. Yep. Uh, I So I went down the rabbit hole because I was like, oh, my God, Megan's running for president because she was wearing a pantsuit on the cover and the pantsuit is the symbol of Hillary who was going to be president that one time. But then I looked closer and it's actually just a shirt and pants that are the same colour. Mm, mm-hmm. But I still mm-hmm. think there could be something to it. Yeah, look, I so that was the cover. She's wearing white. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, which is the, you know, the colour of virgins and champions. But also the other the other images they're wearing green, and I feel like that's symbolism towards their greeny hearts. Yeah, but also maybe green for money because they're money hungry. Ooh, that too. Ding. Um, Tez cover. Yeah, <laughs> you had a lot of opinions about Harry's face. It just doesn't look real. Yeah, it looks pretty photoshopped, hey? It looks like, not to be dark, it looks like one of those um, aged, like, photo modules that they have of kidnapped kids 20 years on. (laughs) You know? It does look like that. It does. Yeah. Yeah. I bet also they, like, they spray gunned his studio fix makeup on like it's it's not put on with a brush I bet it's put on with one of those spray things oh I want one of those 
Yeah, but then you'll look like Harry. Like it's too much. Like it's too caked on. And I know it's for a studio photo shoot, but it it it, it even looked too much in that photo. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um. On the flip side, Kitty Spencer. Have you seen her D and G campaign? I have. What do you, what, what do you think? Oh, I think here's the thing. I have negative feelings towards her, but only because I hate how fabulous she is. Totally agree. I think she's absolutely stunning and she is a very good model and she looks amazing in anything. I Look, this is a tiny bit too critical, but sometimes her face and her mouth looks weird. Well, I mean, she is a blue blood. They all do have, kind of have a horseish vibe. Yeah, I know, but it's like she's got too much filler in her bottom lip and it like sags down. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, lots of people have that going on now. Oh, is that the is that on trend? Well, no, I think it's just what happens if you get a lot of filler. <laughs> you know, and filler's one of those things like you can't stop getting it once you start. It's true. Mm. But other than that, I think she's amazing. Yeah, yeah, great, good on you. Um, and then I maintain my stance that Kate Middleton is up the duff because we still haven't seen her, even though her brother got married on the weekend. Oh, yeah, um, that was really cute. It was like really low-key wedding and they're yeah. like really in love. Yeah, and they love dogs and shit. Oh. I know. Oh, so he's younger than us. How does that make you feel? Oh, uh, is he? Yeah. But isn't he bald also? Yeah, I think he might be. So we're winning. Okay, great. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, um, the Italian cooking show beat Oprah for the Emmy. Did you see that? <laughs> I did. I did. I only <laughs> saw it because you pointed it out on Instagram and I appreciated your take. <laughs> uh, I did hear it was a good show. Yeah, apparently Stanley Tukey is the host, so he's yeah. always fun. Amazing. Yeah. And to be fair, I like that the Emmys didn't go for the celeb grab because there was nothing amazing about the cinematography or the edit of uh, Oprah. You know, it was it was just the name. Yeah. And the content is um, questionable given how close Oprah is with Harry and Meghan and also kind of there was lots of things that didn't add up. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, so on that also, uh, this week on Australian morning television, Thomas Markle came to do an exclusive interview. Tell me everything because I have not seen it. Tell me okay. everything. Um, I, I remembered to get up early to watch it and then I slept in. So <laughs> I didn't actually see it and – I went back to look for it and I just kept seeing the same grab, which I've reposted on the Instagram. So I'm taking it that to be that that was the only interesting thing that came out of the interview if there's just one grab. Okay, great. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Koshi, God bless him. He's a great interview if he's doing like finance stuff. You want to talk about the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. But um, I don't know that Thomas Markle is really his. They should have got bloody um, Sammy Armitage. Oh, nah, she's she's not on it anymore. No. Shit. But look, I do think it is, you know, obviously Channel 7 are doing it for ratings, but it's it's a bit bad taste because he Thomas Markle is obviously not in good health. He rambles a lot. It's hard for him to string a sentence together and I just, you know, they're taking advantage of him just to get a headline. It's a bit sad. Yeah. Yeah. And I know he keeps doing it and I know he probably enjoys getting paid to talk about his daughter, but it's just, it's bad taste for me. Yeah, okay. you got to draw your line somewhere, don't you? Yeah, and that's coming from someone who talks shit about royal people on a podcast. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they say good things. Yeah, sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, thanks for that. Yeah. Um. Anything else from around the traps of note? Uh, That's all I got on my list. Yeah, great. But look, stay up to date on our Instagram because shit is popping off. Old mate's about to have that baby. Uh, Eugenie or Beatrice? (laughs) (laughs) 
you need to come up with a song or something to help you remember. <laughs> um, yeah. One has a baby, one's having a baby. Eugenie's having the baby. Eugenie's having the baby. She wore the stripes last week. Okay. She's the eldest. Right, 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 right. Okay. Maybe we okay. Can, that can be the song. Like Eugenie starts with an E, e and so does eldest. eldest. And B for Beatrice, baby. Ba- there you go. Yeah, fucking great. And she's also a brunette. I mean, to me, they're both gingers. <sighs> I know, I know. Yeah, no judgment. Okay. Um, also, mate, just to note, your internet is absolutely shit and you look like very pixelated. I was going to say the same to you. But oh, really? Yeah, but it's definitely me because I'm the only one that's changed location of recent. Okay. All right. Well, uh, well, maybe let's see what it's like in post. It might be fine. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Everything's fine. <clears throat> fine. Um, shall we crack into the meat of this sandwich? <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Uh, today we're covering the War of the Roses, which happened a fucking long time ago. What do you know? I know absolutely nothing. And as mentioned before we started recording, I named this recording LK's episode about something I can't remember because you told me the other day you're doing the War of the Roses. I have no knowledge of it. So I couldn't remember what the actual episode was about. So this is going to be all brand new to me. <laughs> Oh, amazing. And you know what? You know how we always sort of gloss over the military stuff because it's Borzo? Yeah. Um, this is all military stuff. <laughs> so let's see how this plays out. Okay. I'm sure you can put your LK history teacher spin on it, which is always oh. very entertaining <laughs> and Thanks, not, fit, not fit for persons under the age of 18. <laughs> Well, kids today, I mean. Yeah, true. All right, let me just get a drink. Okay, yeah, me too. Okay. So this whole shebang kicks off in 1337. Yowza, it's ages ago. it's, It's so far ago that there was something happening called the Little Ice Age, which is just a little version of the Ice Age. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cold as shit and um, the plague, I think. It's like <sighs> things were not good. What a time to be alive. I know. No washer dryer, no underwear. <laughs> All axed out. <sighs> okay. Uh, so that sets the scene. So in 1937, King Edward III is King of England, loving it, having a great time. Don't think he was a ginger, but hard to say because the portraits aren't that well coloured because they're from 1337. Yeah, okay, I can imagine. Yeah. So he uh, thought he might also want to be King of France. Okay. Because, yep, yep. So he starts a war with France and everyone's like, yeah, okay. Um, That goes on for a few decades and then... King Ed's son, who's called Ed the Black Prince. Oh, I like how they've changed it up, not just added uh-huh. another Roman numeral. I know. Uh, Ed the Black Prince dies in the war with France. Oh. I'm king of France. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's very sad. <sighs> poor Ed. Poor, poor Black Eddie. Poor Black Eddie, yep. But it's okay because okay. Uh, old mate King Ed has three other sons, so he's, he's got them all ready to go. Ah. There's <laughs> there's johnny who's the duke of lancaster and uh-huh. the symbol for lancaster for those playing a lot at home is the red rose oh interesting yep and then there's edmund the duke of york whose symbol is the white rose okay mm-hmm. wait so he's got a son named edward and a son named edmund absolutely okay good yep. on you ed and then he has another son whose name I didn't write down because he wasn't important. Okay. Yeah. So King Ed III eventually dies. Mm-hmm. And here's where the plot twist is that um, Ed the Black Prince, before he died fighting the war with France, had a son. And so therefore the throne went directly from King Ed to his grandson, Richie II. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Johnny, Red Rose Johnny and White Rose Edmund were kind of pissed. They were yeah. like, we're going to look in. I bet they were pissed, but do you know what, guys? That's how the cookie crumbles. That's how it works. Yeah, except <clears throat> okay. that, uh, New King Richie was 10 and really shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think 10-year-olds are very good at being king. That's true, but um, it's his birthright. So, what 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 do the Rose brothers do about it? I mean, they actually stage a coup because why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look. To be honest, I probably would too. I would be dirty. I'd be so yeah. filthy. Um, and so there's a lot of coup staging that goes on. And um, every time I mention a coup staging, just imagine that like whoever starts the coup runs around to the fucking countryside or the seaside or wherever it is they go and, like, rallies a whole bunch of farmers with pitchforks and, like, builds an army and then, like, storms a castle. That's what happens. I think. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That yeah. sounds – I mean, that would be exciting. Imagine that adrenaline rush if you're a farmer at the countryside slash seaside and, um, you know, some bloke knocks on your door, a royal knocks on your door and is like, come on. Grab your pitchfork. Let's go. I mean, in my mind, though, the situation is more like this. You're not just a fucking farmer. You have to, like, grind your own wheat by hand to make flour to feed the 1,900 babies that you have because there's no birth control. And so you're busy doing that. You're busy doing that all day, every day. And then some arsehole knocks on the door and is like, hey, come do this thing with me. You'll probably die, but it'll be a lull. That is an excellent point. And, like, if you're the wife of the farmer, you'd just be like, oh, you bastard, leaving me here to grind the flour with these 19 kids. (laughs) I mean, I like your optimistic take on it, though. I mean, I was just imagining the initial adrenaline rush. Yeah, I mean, you would get there eventually, I think. But you've you've come home with the reality, so thanks for that. (laughs) No worries. I mean, maybe he gives you a pitchfork with the royal crest on it. That'd be cool. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to bring your own tools. That'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got to save the tools for grinding the flour. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you took the pitchfork and then your wife was stuck at home with nothing to grind the flour oh. with. Oh. oh, and she probably didn't even have teeth left. She couldn't even chew it. Yeah, don't bother coming home, mate. Nah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, where were we? John and Edmund stage a coup. I'll be. Okay. Um, it doesn't work out well for Ed. He gets murdered by someone that King Richie, the 10-year-old, sets up to murder him. So he goes away. Okay, so but sorry, the um, the brothers are doing it together, right? Yep, the two okay. roses together, loving it, allies, having a great time. Okay. Then <clears throat> Johnny, uh, is it what? No, it's Red Rose Johnny. Red Rose Johnny um, has a son <laughs> called Henry. So Red Rose Henry. Okay. Then he dies. Okay. Okay. Johnny dies, not Henry. Okay. Um, so when Johnny dies, King Richie, the 10 year old, who's probably not 10 years old anymore, won't let Red Rose Henry take, um, take Johnny's titles. Like he wants him to remain titleless because he's dirty about all the coups. Oh, okay. Well, that's not fair, mate. That's not how it works. No, I know. Yeah. You, you benefited from the birthright thing. Let Henry have a go. Exactly. Yeah. So then Henry stages a coup, um, as you do, <laughs> and he actually kills King Richie, and then Henry gets to become king. Wow, really? Yeah. So Red Rose Henry is king, and he has a great time. Good because on you, Henry. That's awesome. I know. He must have been the next in line now that I think about it. So he got it fair and square. He didn't, I yeah. mean, he had to murder someone, but other than that. Wow, yeah, and so is this the start of the Henrys? Yeah, this is the start of the Henrys. That's Henry IV. Oh, well, there you go. That's why they're all so murdery. 
Yep. Been there all along. Yeah. So then that's Henry IV. Then you have, then, you know, the Ice Age goes away, Henry V, and we get to Henry VI. Uh huh. Actually, don't know what year it is. 1400 and something. It's all irrelevant. No one's happy or like um, nourished. Okay. Are they a little bit warmer now? Because the Ice Age is over. Yeah, the whole Ice Age is over and the plague is over. So, you know, relatively, things are great. Mm, Things are looking up. Yeah. So Henry VI gets crowned when he's an infant because why wouldn't you? Um, and he, look, people think he's a bit daft. He's probably just a bit young. Um, and he hangs out with his cousin Richard, who's the Duke of York. So we've got Red Rose Henry hanging out with White Rose Richard a lot. Like they're besties. Love it. They grow up together having a great time. Okay, and so these are the, the sons of their dads. These are like way, way, way oh, down. They're way down, sorry. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, okay. So Henry, Red Rose Henry, gets this wife from France. Her name's Margaret. She's a bit of a go-getter. I think she might be ginger. Okay. She is like, oh, mate, I don't know that you should be hanging out with Richie of York because he's a white rose and he's just a bit shit. And Henry is a bit daft and sort of does whatever his wife says. So um, she's like, you should hang out with this other guy instead. He's the Duke of Somerset and he's a relative on the Red Rose side and it'll just be better. So just hang out with him instead. Okay. So King Henry VI VI starts hanging out with this Somerset bloke who's also a Red Rose. Um, They're pretty shit at ruling, it would appear. I mean, when people say that these kings in the – 14 and 1500s are shit. They don't give a lot of reasons or I just get bored reading, but, like, let's just assume that he was shit. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, no. I assume that probably means he's, you know, like this is what Robin Hood was on about, like robbing from the, taking from the rich. Wait, they he, the, all the, the poor have to pay all the taxes. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. And he gets rich. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> shit out. That was hard um, for me to explain. <laughs> yeah, you did great. You did great. Because <laughs> I had to reverse it in my brain and I hadn't yeah. thought about it. Anyway. Yeah, everything's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so Henry VI and this Somerset bloke hanging out, having a great time, but everyone else is pretty deaf. Right where is Richie, who he used to hang out with, is a bit dirty because he got kicked out of the club. And he goes away to Ireland and then he comes back and, like, tries to stage a coup but doesn't really work because he didn't get the right army. And so Henry just puts him in prison and then eventually lets him out when he pledges his loyalty to Henry. So they kind of make up. Okay, fair enough. Yep, yep. Um, But, like, the public are pretty dirty at Henry VI and they're just generally not that into the Lancasters because... Um, aforementioned reasons. Uh-huh. So there's a bit of argy bargy. The York family um, sort of stage a bit of a coup, as you do. Remember how we talked about the farmers and the castle? Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't actually, like, win, but Henry, because he's a bit daft, or that's not, that's not good, Lindsay, just because of his brain chemistry, Has a bit of a mental breakdown. Oh, fair enough. I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to deal with. Yeah, it is a lot to deal with. And so Richie from the White Rose side, um, because he's pledged his loyalty to Henry, even though he's a York, gets to be regent. So he gets to be Lord Protector of Henry while he recovers and is essentially proxy king, even though. I mean, that's worked out well for him. Look, it really has. It was shit while he was in prison, but, geez, he come up good. Yep. Yep. Um, but then Henry gets better and he's like, no, nah, I'm ready to have my turn now and there's all this argy-bargy and so the War of the Roses, the Red Rose versus the White Rose, begins on May 22nd, 1455. This is when it all kind of kicks off. Wow. So all yep. of that to get to the War of the Roses. <laughs> 
Yeah, but you need the context. I mean, the war oh. itself is just military boring, military boring. Right. You had to know all that going in, no? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That was that was great, mate. But it's it's a very long history to get to the oh, war. I know. You're telling me. I had to skim through the Wikipedia article. Okay. So what? How do you like? <sighs> <laughs> What's the difference between a coup and a war? Like when do they decide, okay, we're not doing coups anymore, we're doing a war? So a coup, here's my understanding, and please call in because I haven't done international (laughs) studies since year 11. My understanding is that a coup is when you rise up against someone who is in political power and a war you can wage against anyone at any time for any reason. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Like... um. You know, like uh, um, the war on drugs. Right. Not against any one thing. Okay, okay, okay. I I understand in Australia if you're charged with starting a coup, like it's really bad. It's like the worst thing you can be charged with. Yeah, because it's treason. You can't be doing mm, that. Mm. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, look, I've never done it, but I also wouldn't recommend. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so 1455. So Henry keeps winning all the battles but also keeps having breakdowns. Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not I great. Mean, it's, it's a lot going on. It's hard to deal with. It is a lot. And his wife is very pushy, this French bird. French Margot. Um, well, you French know, Margot. she wants what she wants. Yeah, yeah, no, I... Like like Mary Queen of Scots, I do respect it. It can't have been easy in fourteen fifty five. Yeah, and French house furnishings don't come cheap. No, no, she needed all that. That yeah. greed was helpful for her. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So because he keeps having breakdowns, the public aren't really into the Lancasters anymore. They're like, what's this shit about? They're all about the Yorks. So cousin Richie, who is a York, who's the one who was the Lord Protector. Yep. Remember him? Yep. He has a baby called Ed. Love it. <laughs> uh, so then when Ed grows up, Ed of York, he goes and sees the bishop in London. The bishop goes to talk to the people on the streets and there's all these chants saying people want the Yorks. They want Ed to be king. Really? Yeah. So Ed becomes de facto king because uh, Henry's still having his breakdowns. So they just kind of let Ed be oh, king okay. the York because that's what everyone wants. So he's Edward the Fourth. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, yep. Okay. Yep. So there's still this argy bargy though. Like there's battles every now and then. Everyone wants to, you know, have their turn. Um, there's this guy called the Duke of Warwick who's been, I think he's a distant relative of the Yorks and he's been fighting with them forever. He wants Ed IV to marry some French woman whose name I don't know. She had a title. She was great. Everyone was all about marrying French people. Um, (laughs) But instead, Ed IV marries some titleless wench because he's in love. Wow. It's a bold move. I know. And the Duke of Warwick is like, fuck you and fuck this and fuck your whole family, I'm going to fight for the Lancasters now. Oh, my God. No, I know, I know. So then Duke of Warwick, who was always on the York side and I'm pretty sure is a York, gets Crazy Henry back on the throne. Wow. So many many players in this game. And then there's all this argy-bargy, Crazy Henry's French mum and son get captured by the Yorks and they get killed. Um, There's more argy-bargy. Crazy Henry gets murdered eventually, we think, by a York. That's the end of the Lancaster reign. King Edward IV remains king. And then if you remember back to when he dies, Mm -hmm. that's when... There's all this argy bargy between his son Richard the Third and those two little boys that got locked up in the Tower of London, and we've come full circle. Wow! Yeah, Oof. you've closed the gap, haven't I? Wow! Haven't I? I know. 
And that's The War of the Roses. And it's got something also to do with Outlander that I haven't quite figured out yet. Okay, okay. What about Outlander, yeah. Um, can I just ask, how many hours did you put on your timesheet to research all that? Like <laughs> days? Nah, I've got to be honest. Um, a lot of people do quick and dirty recaps of this on YouTube. Oh. With animations. Ooh. And um, it was really helpful because the Wikipedia article, I mean, God bless people that love military shit, but they do tend to be quite long-winded. And um, mm. that, to me, that's not a thing to be long-winded about. No, agree. Yeah, mm. uh, to be honest, that's how I learned about the Cold War on YouTube with animations as well. Mm. Yeah, that's a hard one too. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's still my, War yeah. of the Roses. Wow, that is intense. It's a long journey. There's a lot of players involved, and I mean, like, there's a lot of the same outcomes. Like, did no one learn their lesson? I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like. Isn't, isn't like, not Secret Son Simon, but isn't there another Australian person that can somehow trace lineage to be like the Lancaster descendant of the throne or some shit? Oh, I don't know. Isn't I, there like that somehow? I don't know, mate. No idea. Yeah. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Um, and then before we forget, we have to play the page 10 game. <laughs> Before we forget, mate, I never forget. You always forget. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, are there any? Oh, yeah, there's a. The current descendant of the line is Simon Abdi Hastings, 15th Earl of Loudon. So there you go. People are still paying attention. Okay, okay. Well, is, where, where does he live? In Australia? No, I don't think he does. I think I made that up. Okay. Probably lives in Lancaster. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, okay, what are we page turning? War of the Roses. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, there's a film. A film. Oh. 1989. Mm, probably not high def. Oh, there's a lot of boring shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, middle age facts for kids. This will be helpful. Oh, that's great. Um, Henry the Sixth was only ten months old at the time. An ad for a leather sofa. Oh, cast of the War of the Roses film made in nineteen eighty nine. Kathleen Turner. Danny DeVito, Michael Douglas, Sean Austin. Who's then, Kathleen Turner? You would know her. Um, she has been in. Oh, is she? Um, I feel like she's Chandler's mum on Friends. Oh, sorry, Chandler's dad on Friends. Oh, my God. Amazing. Let me have a look. I don't know her at all. I'm pretty sure. Men with two brains, Jewel of the Nile. Yeah, she is. She's um, Chandler's dad on Friends. <laughs> wow. I bet that pay- that was a good paycheck. Oh, she's in Marley and Me. Is she? Yeah. Um, well, that was great. I mean, I'd say we'd do a mate's rates, but I don't really want to. A mate's rates for what? Um, that movie. Oh, for that movie. Um, yeah, nah. Okay. Maybe. Okay. No. Maybe not. I've also found a band called War of the Roses. I'm going to play a clip. Hang on. Okay. War of the Roses. It's War of the Roses. Get on the website oh, at Magic925. I think it's a podcast. I don't really understand, but good for them. Shouts out. <laughs> um, mate, thanks so much for that very informative, very technical explanation of the War of the Roses, which I now know something about. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thanks for playing along. Thanks for sticking with me. There wasn't actually too many um, 
same names today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a few. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does make it easier to kind of follow along. But it, then it's tricky if they throw in a rogue name. Yeah, or like Edward and Edmund is a bit much. Yeah, yeah. Or if they still, like one of them stole Edward, and but it was a different family. Like just oh. keep, like that really confusing. Yeah, same, same. Mm-hmm. Um, great, I think we're done here. Um, I, I think we are too. Yeah, our Instagram's really popping off. Um, we do have Twitter and one of these days we're really going to get in a war with someone to raise the profile of it. We mm. are on Facebook, closed group though, so it will let you in but you got to know to knock. Um, website is lkmrossi.com. Email is hello at lkmrossi.com. You can catch our pods on Spotify and iTunes. We do have new merch coming. We're actually going to um, – debut at a live event next week aren't we but you're not going to be that yeah I, I, I'm excited but also demo because I'm stuck in my house still and you're you know going to events I know I know like I'm gonna put makeup on um so if you happen to be in Chicago Illinois stop by the music box it'll be great um you'll see an animated version of Rossi and I and uh maybe I'll post some photos on the facey that sounds great. Uh, what else? That is all. You've wrapped it up nicely, mate. Thanks so much again for War of the Roses and uh, see you all of a sudden. Boy. Oh.